Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Parameter Estimation. And we're going to look at Fisher's information and more specifically we're going to do some examples uh, of calculating Fisher's information. And as a reminder, Fisher's information for a sample of size n can be calculated like this, where this is the, the partial derivative with respect to theta of the log likelihood and the variance of that. Or you could use minus the, the expected value of the second derivative of the log likelihood with respect to theta. Or, now this is a subtle one, it's the, the derivative of theta of the log likelihood, and then you square it, and then you take the expected value. And I'm going to pass you off to these, these two videos where we derive these formulas, and we give some a little intuition behind the formulas too in these two formulas. So jumping into the example, first we're going to assume that our data follows a Poisson distribution and we're going to have a sample of size n. So the joint distribution is this and I guess technically this should be a, a given. Then the log likelihood of this is this and then that comes out front and that's the log Oh, and that we take the product rule. So the log of a product is the sum of the logs, and so that's what this little extra piece is. And I do that because this will be constant in regards to lambda and drop out of the formula, and then we have minus this. So now if we take the, the derivative with respect to lambda of this, we get minus n, we get 1 over lambda times the derivative of lambda, which is 1, that drops out. There's no lambda here, so it drops out. Now the second derivative of this is the derivative of this. So that's constant, so it goes away. And then this one, you get minus the sum of the xi over lambda squared. Now we're going to use two of the formulas. We're going to look at the variance of the derivative of the log likelihood. And so that is this one here. So we plug in this for this, and then take the variance. Now, n is a constant in regards to x, so the variance, you know, constants don't play a part. So really it's the variance of this, and that constant comes out squared, and then it's the variance of the sum, the sum of the xi's. Now, it, it's a random, you know, sample independent of each other, so there's the the, co the variance will go just right into the sum of the, each the variances of each of those. There's no covariance. The variance of x i is lambda. We're summing n of them, so you get n lambda. One of those lambdas cancel, and we get n over lambda. Now, to use another formula, let's take the negative expected value of this. So you plug that in there the lambda squared comes out and then the expectation goes right into uh, this piece. Now notice the negative and the negative cancel. And we're left with this. It goes in some of the expected value of xi is, is lambda. We're summing in lambda so it's n times lambda when the lambdas cancel and we get n over lambda. Now they equal because they better equal because <laughs> the formulas tell us that they're all the same. And, and I do, we're using more than one formula because sometimes it's just easier to use one formula versus the other. So this is the Fisher information for sample size n. Now another way to do this, and this is more of a note for a, a, a future video, the distribution for Poisson can be written in this form which is exponential form. So if we take this, this is already e to a power, and if we take the log of this and then exponentiate it, then this is kind of, think of it as, as raised to an e. And so this is what we get. But then this piece, if we multiply it by 1, multiply it by n, divide by n, we can just call that x bar and the distribution is still the same, but it's in exponential form. And in other videos, we showed that 
this is a complete sufficient statistic and because it's in exponential form it's also what's called the UMVUE it's the uniform minimum variance unbiased estimator and we'll we'll prove that in, a, in another video and it equals what's called the Cremier uh, Rao lower bound and I think we're going to prove introduce this and prove it in two videos but and what's it equal it this <laughs> you know so let's uh, example number two let's let xi be normal mu sigma squared where x and mu are real numbers and we're going to assume we know sigma squared it's and it's positive so the density for this normal distribution is this the likelihood and remember the sigma squared is constant so it it's in this given part is this you just take the log of each of those now the uh, derivative with respect to mu there's no mu here so it's constant and then this piece so you get the two subtract the exponent chain rule minus one this simplifies to this now the second derivative, the derivative of this, ends up being minus 1 over sigma squared, right? Because if, if you put this over each and think of them as, as uh, two pieces, this is constant with respect to mu, so it goes away. And then we're just left with minus 1 over sigma squared, which is this. So the Fisher information, sample size of 1, is the variance of this. Right, so the this sigma squared comes out squared, so that's the fourth. The constant doesn't play a part in variance, so then we just get the variance of x. And the variance of x is sigma squared. One of those cancels, and we're left with one over sigma squared. Now another formula that we can use is the minus the the expected value of this second derivative. So you plug that in here. The minus is canceled. And this is a constant. There's no x's here. So we just get 1 over sigma squared. And of course, we better get that because the formulas tell us we should. Now here, following up with this normal example, let's let xi be normal mu sigma squared, where sigma squared is unknown and mu is uh, a real number and known. So we take the log likelihood and we get this. Now notice here, there's two pieces, so what I do is I separate, I, I take the minus one in and think of that as a product. So then when you take the log, the log of products to sum of the logs, and that's why we get here. And we're going to take the derivative with respect to sigma squared. And this is a constant sort of drop out. I just did it so it makes it easier. And then we get this piece here. So the derivative with respect to sigma squared, and this is one of those things when I first saw this, it always bothered me. But you can think of it as if you replace sigma squared with, say, theta. So you put a, a, a theta here and a theta here, and then you take the derivative with respect to theta. Then it kind of makes it easier. But now I've been doing it long enough to where I, I, can, I, can, I don't need to do that anymore. So let's take the derivative with respect to sigma squared. So there, this is constant. There's no sigma squared. Here the minus one half comes out front, and it's one over sigma squared times the derivative with respect to sigma squared, which is one. So that's why we get this. And then minus, this comes up and it's sigma squared to the minus one, you know, minus one. The derivative, you know, the minus one comes out, changes that, then it's minus two, so it's sigma squared to the fourth, and this. So now the second derivative with respect to sigma squared here um, you know that can be thought of as sigma squared to the minus one the minus one comes out changes it you get sigma the fourth and over here you get some you know it's very similar technique you just you get this now the Fisher information with respect to a sample size of one that's what that little one means it's the negative expected value of this so we, we put this in here, and then the expected value, this is a constant, 
So you just get minus that. That's don't forget the minus. And that and this minus comes in and makes that a plus, and then we just get the expected value of this. And this is the, the formula for variance, so it's sigma squared. Cancels one of those. You can combine those and you get one over two times sigma the fourth. So that's the fish information. Now let's do the use the variance formula. And this is one of those that calculating this using this formula is so much easier than calculating with the variance. But let's do it with the variance. So it's the variance of this piece here. So it comes in. Now this is a constant. There's no x's. So it drops out of a variance. And then this constant comes out squared. And then we're, it's just a variance of you know x minus mu quantity squared. So this I like to write it as in the formula. So the variance of uh, of something is the expected value of that squared, which is what this is, and then minus the mean of this quantity squared, which is what this is. Now I'm going to pass you off to a video that I have called Moments of a Normal Distribution, where we where this becomes straightforward to calculate and this does too. So this piece comes down and then this is 3 sigma to the fourth and of course this is the variance so it's sigma squared then squared so you get sigma to the fourth that's 2 sigma to the fourth and you end up with this when of course they better equal that. So this is the Fisher information of, of, of a sample of size 1 to do the Fisher information of size n you just take this times n, which then becomes this. Well, that's all I have for this video. The next video, we're going to calculate the Fisher information for Cauchy distribution, and then after that, we'll introduce the Cromer Rao lower bound, or inequality sometimes people call it. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.